Hi and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to take a look at geofencing. And now as a bit of a background this is the wiki definition of a geofence which is defined as a virtual perimeter for a real world geographical area and they have a little diagram here on the right hand side showing a polygon as a geofence. You can have different shapes depending on the application that you're using. And what it's uh, useful a lot is, uh, is asset tracking, so uh, you imagine a delivery guy, uh, he's got a GPS device built into his van or in his mobile phone, and when he enters uh, an area in proximity to your house and he's got a parcel for you, then it sends a message uh, to the application, the application generates an email and sends you an email or text message to say the delivery is going to be 10 minutes away, something like that. Now, in a home automation, uh, what is useful a lot is uh, people tracking. You can you can track members of your household. Uh, you can also uh, acti activate devices depending on your location or someone else's location. So what I'm going to demonstrate I in this video is basically turning on the heating when you're actually near the house. So we're going to set a geofence around the house and basically when we enter the, uh, the perimeter of that geofence, then, then the heating is going to be turned on. Now this is going to be a simulation. I'm not actually going to turn on my heating. Um, I'm going to simulate that. So let's have a quick look at the nodes we're going to use. Now we're going to use um, the world map node and we're going to use the geofence node. So you have to install these. When you install the world, world map node, it installs uh, four actual nodes, um, actually five. Uh, uh, there's a uh, another one down here called the world map UI and this is the one I'm going to use is the UI and the reason I'm going to use it is because if I show you it here you can actually add um, other functionality to this and I'm going to use this basically to control it so I prefer the UI node now I'm not sure when this was introduced it wasn't in the original version of the world map but it, it is in there now so I prefer to use this one if you don't use this one this is the what you get you get the world map like that them no they look the same that they're identical except you can't add the buttons on this one because it's not part of the the UI and it appears on the page here world map whereas this one appears on the standard UI page now for this to really work I actually only need the geofence node, I don't need the other nodes but I, I'm using the world map node to actually visualize it. Uh, the geofence node doesn't actually show you anything, uh, it will actually produce the, the output you want but it doesn't show you anything whereas the, the world map it actually shows you the location on, on the map itself and that's what, it, what it's used for. Okay before we open up these nodes what I want to show you here is is the world map and how I actually generated my data. Now if you look on the bottom left it actually shows you the latitude and longitude of your hat. Now all I did to create my data is I created two points and I just added a marker. It doesn't matter what I call it. All I want to do is know the location of it. Uh, let's do it again. So there's my marker and if I click on it, it tells me the latitude and longitude which I can just make a note of. Now to make it move, and this is uh, what I needed, I need to actually make this uh, marker move uh, through my, my location. Now this is basically simulating a, a GPS device moving. Now I could have done this with my mobile phone but you need to get a suitable application on the mobile phone to do this. Um, and I will be doing another video on on that. It's called Own Track. It's been around for quite a while, and it's an application that goes onto your your mobile phone and sends uh, GPS data back uh, over MQTT or HTTP to a location you specify. But I'm just sim going to simulate this for the time being. Uh, it's much easier to do. So all I do now is drag it over here, and then I click it again. It gives me the location. So I just make a note of these two locations. And what I do then is basically create a little formula and to move the, the marker along. And that's what I've done. And if you're interested in looking at that, it's a, I'll show you it's actually in the node itself. So we're just going to move this marker along there. Now, let's just refresh it to clear my marker. I said I don't want that marker there. Okay, now for the, the geofence, 
I've already created it there it is there in the flow so I'm just going to show you what I do with this other node so again you scroll up and down here to find uh, so if I wanted to put a, a geofence around this area here I s choose the shape I want so we have a circle and I just draw a, a geofence around it and there's my geofence right um, the only other thing we we need to do here is we need to select the action now I'm going to use the add in area property and the reason I'm doing that is because it produ produces more information in particular it tells gives me a true or false when I'm actually inside or outside the the geofence itself and that's what I'm going to use to trigger the heating coming on and this other one here enable the output zones to the world map node again you don't need this but if you are using the world map what this will do is show you the geofence on the world map and I'll show you that in a second when we when we activate it so I activate this one as well so we just cancel that because I'm not going to not, not going to use that now for the world map node now I'm not using this one here I've just disabled it I don't need it if I'm using this one here and the settings on them are the same so we set our starting latitude and longitude which we get from the the map in the manner I just showed you before we set the zoom level which is what happens when we um, sorry the zoom level here is what happens when we actually start it up it actually focuses in on that area and we can always change that when we're, when we're in there and the age of the marker I had left it as the as default 600 seconds that's how long the marker appears on the map before it gets removed and what I've got here is I want to show the layer menu and I want to show you the the degrees that shows you in the bottom left hand corner which I showed I've enabled the right click so I can actually put my marker on the page otherwise that won't work and that's it that's all I need to do on, on, on this there's nothing else I need to do okay so this is the flow now most of this is control this is the, producing the control buttons here and the, sele the selection icon here which you can change the actual icon I'll show you that when we do the demo um, the main nodes here is the geofence node here that's the geofence node now when you enable the display world map you get two outputs now the second output will send a message to the world map in the format that it understands and it will draw the geofence on the map and I'll show you that when I hit the reset button you'll see the geofence map come on the map and now this function node here is the one that moves the icon when I click on the move button and you can see all I do is basically take the start and end points which start latitude start longitude and the end ones and I subtract them and I divide in here by 12 because I'm going to move 12 steps I set the color to blue and that's the color it is when it's actually out of the area and when it goes in the area it goes to green now the detection of the in area is done on this function node here uh, should really label that one and this is detect this is taking the message coming out of the geofence node and it detects um, the in area so if the location in, do in area is true then I set the flag to true then w if the flag is true I set the color to green and I turn the heating on otherwise the heating is is turned off that's the default condition here and the default color is blue so let's see it in action and if I go on to the thing there and I reset now this produces my starting icon and it produces my geofence here and now and now let's move the icon so we move along here and we enter the boundary and we change color and the heating goes on and we go across the thing and the get a, exit the boundary the heating goes off if we go reverse the heating comes back on again and 
then the heating goes off again. Now if I want to change the color of this icon, this, I'll just change it to a helicopter and I can change it to a ship. Now these are uh, awesome font, I, I think awesome font, yeah, I think that's the correct term. Anyway, there are those icons, the information for that is actually in the world map node. And here it is here, uh, here it goes, uh, font awesome it's called, not awesome font, uh, oh well. Uh, another thing you will find useful and I recommend you uh, take a look at is the documentation uh, for the uh, world map node and I'll put a link in the video description below and that takes you through all the settings you can use and it's got some examples as well so I recommend you do take a look at that uh, there's a lot more to the world map node than I that I've shown there's a lot more things you can do with that I've shown uh, but this is just a demo and I say I'll be doing another video show showing you how to use this with um, own tracks and, uh, and a mobile phone. Okay, that's the end of the video. Until next time, bye.